Well, let's discuss the rack and pinion mechanism. As a control engineer, you may want to convert rotational motion given by a motor into linear motion. One of the most common ways to do that is to use a rack and pinion. A rack and pinion consists of a gear that slides or rotates over um, a, a rack, uh, causing a linear motion. So the you have you have a rot rotating motor behind here that causes this to slide back and forth. Uh, we can model this using a rack and a pinion. A pinion has a gear that's attached to a shaft of a motor that has a moment of inertia j, and a rack that's sliding on top of it, having a mass m. and moving with the velocity v. We may assume that there may be some damping b associated with the mass that resists the motion of that mass. We can also assume that the radius of that gear is r. If we apply conservation of angular momentum to the shaft, we get sum of all the torques acting on it would just be equal to j omega dot, where omega is the angular velocity of the shaft. There is only one input torque, so that equation will simply be tau equals j omega dot. What is the relationship between the omega, the angular velocity of this shaft and the velocity of that mass, it will be simply be given by the velocity equals r omega, if we assume that this is perfectly rotating without any slipping or any of that. Similarly, the force acting on this mass f will be simply given by the torque divided by the radius. So we can use these two expressions just like we did with a motor to go back and forth between the rotating uh, system and this translating system. Let us also uh, consider uh, a force balance on this mass. So sum of all the forces on that mass will be given by m times x double dot, where x is the position of that mass. And what forces are acting on it? Well, we have the force due to the torque. And we have the damping force, which resists the motion of that. So it will be negative. It will be b multiplied by x dot, or b, the velocity in this case, would equal mx double dot. <coughs> so we get another equation that looks like this, mx double dot plus bx dot equals tau over r. Again, this is a second order ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients, and we can use it, uh, we can use the techniques, uh, similar techniques to solve it as well. We have seen many different types of systems, so mechanical, rotating, me mechanical systems, translating systems, electrical systems, uh, and even combinations of systems like motors. Uh, and in all of them, we end up getting similar sort of differential equations uh, that can be solved uh, rather easily with various tools and techniques that we have. Uh, in future lectures, we will see how to actually do this. Uh, we will start to look at first and second order systems and specifically how to solve them analytically as well as numerically. And we'll also look at high order systems and how to formulate solutions to those or simulate those uh, in various types of situations. Thank you.